Okay, so we are at episode two. Day two of our 10 days of Dahmer. So let's get straight into it. We won't. Okay. So at the beginning of episode two, I feel like they go back in time. And what they're trying to do is trying to like paint a picture of why Jeffrey was the way he was. Now, just like I said in our first day of Dahmer, um, the only thing I don't like about this uh, reenactment is the time lapse. They go back and forth, you know, through different times of Jeffrey's life from when he was a child to when he was a teenager to when he was a full grown adult. So going into episode two, we go back to him as a child. Okay. Um, We're trying to understand why he is the way he is. So they take us to a bus scene where Jeffrey's sitting on a bus and he's sitting in the back minding his own business, you know, not nobody's bothering him. But then we go into two white kids bullying a black kid. I didn't really understand this scene. I don't really know the purpose of this scene um, because Jeffrey wasn't being bullied, nor was he the bully. So it almost, to me, it almost made it seem like maybe Jeffrey felt sorry, you know, for black kids or because the world has painted this picture of Jeffrey Dahmer as being a racist. Like he targeted, um, just like I said again, he targeted black men and I just don't feel like that was the case at all um in that scene in this movie the only thing it proved is that he felt sorry for you know black men that were being bullied or whatever because that that first scene the bus scene proved nothing it it proved nothing that okay so then we go into a scene where Jeffrey's we just jump into another scene where Jeffrey's still young but um He's walking, he walks into the house, right? His mother overdosed. She's laying in the bed and she's um, still alive, but she's unconscious. So, <laughs> so the dad comes home, right? And I'm, this scene was trippy. Like, I laughed. I laughed, I'm sorry. But the dad come home, he like, oh, what she do, overdose again? <laughs> she's like, he's like, did she finally do it? Did she finally kill herself? This is the world's best drama queen. Like, the dad is so insensitive to the mom's overdose. Like, he just don't care at all. And that's just... And that kind of, like, gives you an insight on how the mom was. I was just painting this picture that the mom is, like, an addict who's trying to kill herself multiple times and who's overdosed multiple times. And the dad is so insensitive. He don't care. So then we go into another crazy, like just another lapse it goes just boom 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 like these scenes don't really connect in episode two so episode two was definitely my least favorite but we go into another scene where jeffrey goes to school and you see all the students giving their teacher you know an apple you know students give teachers apples that's good um so jeffrey he goes to school and he gives his teacher a jar of these big ginormous tadpoles so now you're kind of wondering, like, why? Like, okay, it's obviously something wrong with this kid. Like, who gives their teachers tapples? Okay, and so then another student at the class comes up to the teacher. She's like, why did he give you tapples? And she's like, I don't know. And he's like, he's such a, like, he says something offensive. And she's like, let's just be nice. So the the boy asks, he's like, can I have the tapples? And the teacher give them to him. So then they go to in the hallway like changing classes or whatever and jeffrey sees the boy with the tadpoles and jeffrey's you know he's offended like i gave them to her why do you have them so jeffrey ends up stealing the tadpoles back and he takes them back to where he got them from but instead of letting them go free he kills them with the acid that his this this acid some type of acid he put in there and he killed the tadpoles so that's where you kind of come to the conclusion like okay yeah this He's not, like, mentally stable. Something's obviously wrong with him. You know, you think you think Tapples, okay, he just killed Tapples. We probably killed Tapples before, you know? But they paint it as something's wrong with him. The way he killed the Tapples and just watched him die. Like, something was eerie about that. Something said, okay, yeah, this kid got a little bit of issues. So, after the Tapple incident, again, another so this is the part where we jump into Jeffrey's back home from school that day, you know, after the tap hole incident or whatever. And his dad is home and his dad is um, looking for a dead animal that was under the house. So this is where we learn that Jeff, Jeff's dad, this is where we learn more about, you know, where Jeff's obsession comes from. 
you know, his obsession with dead animals and dissecting them comes from. So his dad picks up a dead raccoon, I think, or dead squirrel. I think it was a raccoon. I'm, I'm not sure. But he's kind of like putting stuff into Jeff's head and he's like, you know, telling him about the dead animal parts. And it's just like, this is the part where I feel like his dad was to blame, you know? Okay, so then they go on a road trip. You would think they're like about to go fishing or they're about to go do some father-son interaction, but no. They're driving. Jeff's like, there's one. So we get the image. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We get the image of roadkill. So they stop, pick up the roadkill, put it in the trunk, take it back to the house, to the house and dissect it. Jeff is just infatuated by this dead animal. And it's all his dad's fault. Like, his, I just... I don't understand why. Like, why it was a raccoon at this point. And it's his dad putting all this stuff in his head. Like, his dad is the one who took him and said, okay, well, we're about to go find a dead animal. Obviously, because when he said, there's one, you knew that they were on the mission to find a dead animal. So they start dissecting. <laughs> they literally start dis dissecting the raccoon. And this is where we learn how Jeff is infatuated. Okay, so we go into another lapse in time. Jeffrey is older. Okay, and it's obvious that his mom and his dad is splitting up. Um, or they're already split at this time. But Jeff wants to live with his dad. He don't want to live with his mom. And he don't really with his mama like that. He want to live with his dad. So he goes to live with his dad and his dad's mom, his grandmother. Okay, and um, this is where we kind of learn that... Uh, Jeff really isn't into females, you know. We we learned that he... I feel like his dad, like, had those suspic suspicions. And that's why he started, like, asking him questions. Because they go fishing, right? And even his grandma said something. He was like, I can't wait till you find, like, a younger girl, you know. And Jeff's dad is also asking him questions. Like, um, so you're dating anybody? And this is... Jeff is... These questions make him uncomfortable. He don't want to talk about dating. Like, that's just, especially girls. So, coincidentally, we're talking about, you know, Jeff's sexual preferences. Another time lapse. Boom. We go into a sausage party. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not <laughs> Jeff is literally at work holding a sausage. And the way he's holding it, like, he's holding the sausage, like, but you can tell he's at work. Like, he's at work. It's not no weird shit that he's, you know, typical Jeff Dahmer weird shit. He's at work, right? And so he has on this black t-shirt and these jeans. You know, he got the belt on and he's just a weird. Anyway, his boss comes in and he's like, what is that? And he's looking at Jeff's t-shirt and Jeff's like, um, a t-shirt? He's like, no, that's not what we wear. We wear white. Like, basically, Jeff was, wasn't dressed properly for the job, so... Jeff has to go and get a new shirt. So after he leaves work, he gets some money and he goes to the mall, right? And he becomes infatuated by this mannequin that's on the wall. So in my head, the first thing Jeff is about to do is take the clothes off this mannequin and steal it for his, you know, steal the shirt for his job. That's what I thought. But then, like, the way he starts staring at the mannequin. The mannequin is a male mannequin. It got, you know, the male hair, the abs, you know, and the little bulge, like, <laughs> anyways um so he's like lusting over the abs and the, the 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 posture of this mannequin that's where we kind of confirm okay we thought he was gay but now we know he's gay because he's lusting over this male mannequin not only do we know he's gay we also know that he's a weirdo because who sits there and lusts over a freaking mannequin so i'm like okay well he about to steal the clothes for his job because he go and hide like in the fitting room he goes in the fitting room, put his legs up, and he hides. They close the mall. He comes out, still in my head. I'm like, okay, he's about to steal the shirt. But no, he steals the mannequin. He takes the mannequin apart and steals it. So Jeffrey goes home. He got the mannequin in his bed. And that night, he is, like, making weird love to this mannequin. And that scene kind of creeped me out because <laughs> it was the weirdest shit ever i'm sorry and that just confirmed his sexuality um if you didn't already know the dharma story like before this before this aired this just confirmed his sexuality he is obviously gay so anyways his grandmother is she's becoming suspicious of her grandson she's wondering what the fuck is going on right so she's cleaning up one day and she goes into his room 
And she's like, she sees a bulge in the bed. It looks like a body. And she's wondering what's going on because Jeff wasn't there. So she walks over to the bed. And slowly but surely, she like pulls the covers back. She's trying to figure out what's going on. And then you hit with a plot twist. Boom. Thing is the mannequin, right? Nope. It is the body of a black man. But so <laughs> the time from when the grandma pulled the cover back, it literally jumps into a time lapse and shows the body of a black man. That was just I feel like that scene was just put there to like confuse, throw everybody off, you know, because obviously her intention, the writer's intention was to confuse the watchers, the readers, obviously, because all these time lapses just don't make sense. So anyways, we jump into a completely different scene, okay? And, um, and why is it a fly in this garage just making me mad? And because I can't catch it. But anyway, we go into a new scene, right? So Jeffrey is at a store, obviously, and there's a crew of like three guys, okay? And one of them, so he's like, um, let me guess, don't have an ID, right? So let's pause for a second because I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking the same thing I was thinking. If when grandma lifted those cover back, covers back and found a black man, why was nothing reported? Why was nothing investigated? Why is this man still living his life? Like, get it together, grandma. Seriously. Because throughout this whole movie, I feel like Jeff's dad was responsible, partly. This is all Jeff Dahmer's fault. This is all him. He had some chemical imbalance in his brain that made him do the things that he did. Um, but his dad played a major part. His mom played a major part. But his grandma also played a major part, too. Like She knew he was weird and nothing was ever reported. Anyways, um, so let's get back to it. So somehow... The three kids that Jeff saw at the corner store to get beer, he lured, he lured this other kid with beer. Um, but this other kid kind of, he was only 14. Let's let's put that out there. This kid was 14 years old, and this happened in real life. On top of being 14, this kid also knew about Jeff Dahmer, and he knew that Jeff Dahmer was obviously previously arrested for taking pictures of his brother or someone he was pretty close to so a lot of people victim blamed him you know they said you was aware of Dahmer and what he had going on and you still went up there with him you got to remember this kid is 14 he's a kid that's just a real life situation but in this movie the guy I forgot his name I can't pronounce it actually but um he, he played the part very well anyways he went up to Dahmer's apartment but he went up in hopes of Money. He knew Dahmer was offering money to take pictures. So the the dude is like, okay, I'm here. You offered my brother money, but that went sideways. So I'm here for the real money, for real, because my family needs money. So the boy was there in hopes of just money. 14 years old. So they get into the apartment, and the boy realizes there's no party. Like, it's just Dahmer, and it's just this 14-year-old kid. And they're sitting on a chair, and Dahmer's on one side of the chair, and the 14-year-old boy is on the other side of the chair. So the dumber gets the age, the real age of the boy. Now, any any normal human, normal adult would just be like, okay, you're 14. Get out of my house. Go home. You shouldn't even be outside. You're 14 years old. But Dahmer's like, that's okay. I won't tell anyone. The boy is not pressed at all. So he just, he's like, you know, my brother. And I don't know if it was, like, his blood brother or if it was just, you know, people called, you know. Um, so, he like, you know, my brother. My brother was here. Like, you know. So, Dama was like, if you think I'm such a bad person, why are you still here? Like, just trying to manipulate the young boy. So, the boy tries to bribe Dama for $100. And Dama is just not going for it. He's just like, like, I know what you're trying to do. Like, because he go into this psychotic break for a second. I'm sorry, I'm drinking. He goes into the psychotic break for a second, but then he he comes to he calms down, and um he tells the dude he's like, all right, I'll give you twenty three dollars right now, and when we're done, I'll give you the rest. So, I guess uh they get into it, and Dahmer offers him a drink. We see Dahmer drug the drink 
gives it to the 14 year old starts talking to him and then the 14 year old you know falls into this drugged up trance that he is just stuck into like he he just passes the fork out he just passes the heck out and um Jeff goes and grabs his camera. Okay, so when the boy wakes up, Jeff Dahmer is not in the apartment at all. He walked somewhere around the neighborhood. The boy's only in Speedos, you know, typical serial killer shit. Um, he got the 14-year-old down to Speedos. The 14-year-old is drugged up, obviously. He can not He can barely walk. He can't talk at all, but he gets up realizing that he's in, like, a terrible state. So he makes it out of Jeff Dahmer's apartment, you know? And the neighbor that I was telling y'all about in the first episode, this is where she starts to notice, like, something's wrong. So her daughter is sitting outside um, of her apartment, the neighbor's daughter, and she's like, she's like boy you naked like something's not right so she runs out of the house and i guess she tells her mom and her mom's end up indirectly they prove that her mom called the police because the male make it outside right so jeff Dahmer is on his way back into his apartment when he noticed the police there and the boy is just sitting there obviously out of his mind so when jeff is walking up he's like what's wrong the police are like do you know this man Jeff was like, yeah, that's my boyfriend. So y'all can hear the neighbors trying to tell them, like, this is a child. And what I don't, this part made me so fucking mad. Like, this is Milwaukee Police Department, by the way. They should be held 100% accountable for this incident itself. Maybe more, but specifically this one. Anybody that have kids, you can look at a 14-year-old male and you can look at a 19 year old male and tell the difference okay you know a child when you see one i have a 13 year old there's no way in hell a male would ever come up to me and tell me he's you know 23 or anything older than what he is it's just like you would know the difference as a cop you should know the difference Jeffrey told the cops Jeffrey told the cops that this was his boyfriend and he was 19 years old and he was just drunk the cops believed him over the woman who was already telling him, like, this is a child. Like, this woman called constantly after the situation, just asking if, you know, did y'all verify his age? Is everything okay with him? She was really worried about this child. They escorted this child back to Dahmer's apartment. The police did. They escorted this child with no proof of his age, no proof that he was ever even Jeffrey's boyfriend, no proof of nothing they escorted this child back to Dahmer's apartment. This 14-year-old child was murdered that night by Jeffrey Dahmer. <sighs> this is an event that happened in real life, and my heart just goes out to his family. His family just went through so much. And the further we get into it, you'll see what his family really went through. So, like, before, when the police escorted the young boy back to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment, they ignored every red flag possible. So, they go into his house, and even the police start to smell this stench. They smell the stench that the boy from the first episode smelled. They smell the scent that the 14-year-old smelled. They smell the scent that the neighbor's smelling and reported so many times. They smell the scent. And, you know, Dahmer, oh, it's just a bunch of meat that went bad. Uh, my family know I love pork chops, so they sent me a bunch, and they just kind of went bad. They ignored it told Jeffrey to take care of the 14 year old boy that they thought in their minds was a 19 year old boy who was Jeffrey's boyfriend and they leave and <laughs> I will be releasing the uh, the names of these officers they need to be held accountable I don't care how old they are now so episode two ends with the sound of a power drill and we learn later but I don't want to blow it because we are only in day two of our 10 day, you know, days of Dahmer. So episode two is with the son of a power drill. We we know um, that Jeffrey has killed a 14 year old. He murdered him and he was trying to do something with his school that was indescribable. We'll learn about that later. But um, we get the 911 call from the neighbor who who's calling and she's asking like did y'all ever verify his age well is the boy okay how do y'all know that wasn't a child 
well are y'all sure that wasn't a child and the officer is literally blowing her off now let me tell y'all this officer name his last name was b-a-l-c-e-r-a-k he was an officer of the milwaukee police department in wisconsin we need to do something something needed to be done about that this day and age that officer would have never got away with that not the way black people are rising not the way that black people and the crazy thing is he wasn't even black but he was colored he was a minority you know and like i said this day and age he would have never got away with that being that it was so old you know that was when when our colored people and when i say colored i mean asians black people Hispanics, it's you know you get my drift. Anyways, um, that that would have been exploited. That would have been he would have never got away with that. But those officers at this time got away with it. The boy was murdered. Never saw his family again. Never saw his brother again. His family went through a bunch. And once we get into a few more episodes down the line, you'll learn all the horrific things that his family went through. But that wraps up episode. So that wraps up day two of our 10 days of Dahmer, okay? Episode two. So tomorrow I will meet you guys right back here and we will discuss episode three. We'll talk about your thoughts and opinions, my thoughts and opinions, of course. Do not be afraid to comment down below exactly how you feel and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.